Hi, I'm Dr De Bruin and I'm here with a quick walkthrough of how to answer this question from the atomic structure topic of AQA A-level chemistry. Today we're back with atomic structure and thinking about how the relative abundance of some different isotopes can contribute to the relative atomic mass. So in this question we've actually got three isotopes um, and we know what the masses of those isotopes are but we don't know the abundances of two of them. So we're going to start out by writing out an expression for relative atomic mass. Now you've got two options, um, you can either do it like this with everything over 100 and it's really good to be um, in the habit of being able to do that because it means that if you're given something that is abundance rather than percentage abundance, then you can change out the 100 for whatever the total abundance is. Um, but the alternative, of course, is to do it as decimals. And I tend to prefer decimals um, just because it's a bit easier um, and a bit more straightforward and you don't end up with huge numbers when you have to start by multiplying everything by 100. So we're going to write ourselves an expression. I'm going to use decimals, but you could do this as um, starting out times 11 and the whole thing over 100. Instead, it would still work out. And I need to have a letter that's going to represent the abundance of um, one of my isotopes. So I'm going to use X um, and we're going to make that the bigger isotope. And the reason that we're going to do that is that if you start out with your heavier, more massive isotope having the abundance of X, then when you finish the calculation, um, you're not going to have negative numbers. Not that there's a problem with negative numbers. We can all handle negative numbers. But if you pick the bigger isotope, it just saves you one fewer thing that you don't have to do. Now, the temptation here and what lots of novices tend to do is that they tend to then be like, oh, we'll use Y for the other abundance. But you can't do that because we've only got one equation. So we can't solve simultaneous equations here. So we have to express the abundance of the second isotope in terms of X. Now, we know that everything, all the different abundances have to add up to be 100 percent or to be one. So therefore, one is going to be 0 0.11 because I have 11 percent of my first isotope plus something plus x so therefore that something must be 0.89 take away x because 0.89 and 0.11 add up to be one and then the plus and the minus x would cancel each other out so hopefully you can see where that um, expression is coming from because that tends to be the bit that throws people so my second isotope is going to have this abundance of 0.89 take away x um, or if you were doing it as not decimals that we'd have 89 take away x and the whole lot over 100 um, so if I then write out all that lot, I'm going to have the value of the relative atomic mass that I was given in the question is going to be 9.79 plus that whole horrendous expression once we've times everything by 87 plus 88x. And now I just need to simplify things. So all of that lot simplified on the right hand side comes out at 87.22 plus x. That x has come from the minus 87x and the plus 88x. Um, so you can see now how it's useful to have the heavier isotope being the one that is x, because if we'd done it the other way around, we'd still have a very similar expression, but it would have a minus x value in it. Um, and then we're just going to take away that 87.22 from both sides and be left with 0.78 is X. OK, so what does that actually mean? Well, I was expressing my abundances as decimals. So one would be 100 percent. Therefore, um, 0.78 is 78 percent. And that was the abundance of my isotope 88. So this means I've got 78 percent of yttrium 88. And then that leaves me with 11 percent of the yttrium 87. Thank you very much for watching and I hope that you're finding these walkthroughs of A-level chemistry exam questions useful as part of your revision or your ongoing A-level chemistry studies. If you are finding them useful then don't forget to like and subscribe for more A-level chemistry videos coming soon.